Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of integral calculus, also known as Calc 2. All material has an assumed prerequisite of differential calculus and a full semester course in trigonometry. A thorough review of prerequisite topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook over. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is dedicated to Calc 2 students who are in the throes of sequences and series and learning about power series. You should have already learned about what a power series is and also how to represent a very specific kind of function as a power series. Well, I'll go ahead and write that down here for your benefit. The power series the summation from zero to infinity of x to the n is equivalent to one over one minus x if that absolute value of x is less than one. And that's the only way we're gonna get convergence of that power series to that functional closed form. And by the way, that phrase closed form is a phrase that we will use sometimes in calculus and beyond where we're dealing with either a power series or some other kind of jumbled mess. And we want to say, well, let's find the closed form of that. That means let's find a functional representation of that if we can. Well, if you take a look at the function they've handed us and they're asking us to find a power series representation for that function and determine the interval of convergence. Well, this function looks nothing like one over one minus something. Right? And by the way, the one over one minus something is generally how I tell my students uh, to view this, just like that. However, you do know from your prerequisite calculus material that you can do a partial fraction decomposition on this fractional function or rational function. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that very quickly here. Since it is prereq material, I go kind of quickly through this. However, I'm going to use a method that your instructor may not have covered. So if I lose you a little bit here, you can find the partial fraction decomposition using whatever method you learned. Or if you want to learn a new method, then go ahead and pay attention to this. We know that this fraction can be broken apart into some number over x minus four plus some other number over x plus two. We're gonna use a method called the heavy side cover-up method. And what the heavy side cover-up method does is it allows us to talk about, well, what would happen if we allowed one of those factors in the denominator to be zero? And when you do that, you find what we call the residuals. And those residuals are actually the numerators of those factors when you do the partial fraction decomposition. For example, go ahead, pause the video, and do the partial fraction decomposition the way you learned it, then come back. Well, I hope you're back now. What we're gonna do is go ahead and cover up one of those two factors. And I'm choosing to cover up the x minus four just because it's the first factor. And what we're gonna do is let x equal four in this fraction, the remaining parts of this fraction that are not covered up, and notice if you let x equal four, that actually would normally cause division by zero right there. However, we're gonna ignore that, and it's gonna give us what we call the residual. And the residual is going to be the numerator of the x minus four in the partial fraction decomposition. So for example, letting x equal four in this remaining fraction, you get that the numerator will be six and the denominator will be six as well. And that will actually be the numerator of our partial fraction decomposition term of something over x minus four. Let's see that again, but this time we're gonna cover up the other factor. Covering up x plus two, we're gonna let x equal a negative two in the remaining factors of that fraction. And if you do that, you will get a six in the numerator and a negative two minus four or a negative six in the denominator. And this allows us to say the partial fraction decomposition of that original function is going to be one over x minus four minus one over x plus two. That's a very quick way to use 
partial fraction decomposition. Now I do have to um, state here, the heavy side cover up method is what I would normally call a shortcut. Shortcuts to me are things that sometimes work, but don't always work. The method you were taught to do partial fraction decomposition is a method that will always work. As long as you did a comparison of coefficients or solve the system of equations or something like that, that is a method that will always work. The heavy side cover up method, which is what we used here, will only work in very special situations. I'm not going to get into when it works because that's not the point of this video, but you can look it up. It's um, actually done by a mathematician by the name of Heaviside, spelled that way. So you can look it up, Heaviside cover up method. Anyhow, so we know the function decomposes into one over X minus four minus one over X plus two. And we want to find the power series representation of that function. We have to write each of these fractions as one over something or one minus something. Well, right now, uh, the easiest thing I can do with that first fraction is factor out a negative and I could write that as one over four minus X. So far, it's getting close to what I want. The second fraction I could write as one over uh, two plus X. I actually haven't done very much there. The next move is to force these two coefficients to be one. And I do that by factoring. I'll factor out a one fourth out of the first fraction. And when I do that, it's basically dividing both of the terms in the denominator by four. And when I factor a one half out of the second fraction is basically dividing that denominator by two. Now, I'm not gonna draw another line for this. Instead, I'm gonna do a little bit of erasing. This second fraction is not of the form one over one minus something, but we can fix that. It is one over one minus a negative X over two. So now we do have it of the form one over one minus something. Both of them are actually. So let's go ahead and trade them out for their power series representations. And we get to this point right here. And this is actually not too bad. A couple things I wanna mention before I continue is that we should mention the radius of convergence. Both of these are completely different power series. So let's take a look at this first one here. We know that it's based on the geometric series because that's exactly how we built this, right? This is the geometric series with an unknown uh, base. And we need that unknown base to be less than one in magnitude. That is, in this case, we need the absolute value of X plus four to be less than one, or in other words, we need the absolute value of X to be less than four, or that is, we know that that power series will converge for X between negative four and positive four. However, if you take a look at the second power series, we require that the common ratio there, which is a negative X over two, be less than one in magnitude as well. Well, we know the absolute value of a negative is a positive, multiplying both sides by two, you get to this. And this just means that we know that second power series will converge as long as X is between negative two and positive two. Well, if I want this entire summation or in difference in this case of these power series to converge totally, then I'm going to take the tighter of these two restrictions. That is, I'm not going to say our interval of convergence is negative four to four, because that means that I can include X equals three. However, we know the second power series does not converge for X equals three. It actually diverges when X is equal to three. So you wanna take the tighter of the two restrictions here. Now that we have all kind of seen that, and actually let me highlight that. Now that we have made the statement that our interval of convergence is from negative two to positive two, and usually you would write it in interval notation rather than inequality notation. So there we go, that's the interval of convergence really. So now that we have stated the interval of convergence, let's go ahead and just clean this up. Just minor cleanup here. There are times when you can do some major cleanup on these, but this is not one of those times. 
as you can see, I basically pulled apart all of the factors within those powers and applied the powers to each of the resulting factors. That is, I wrote this fraction here as x to the nth over four to the nth. And this fraction right here, I wrote as negative one to the nth, x to the nth over two to the nth. And you could actually do a little extra work. For example, I could bring this four in the denominator here and the two in the denominator there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by doing that. Once you get down to here, you may think, well, I'm done. And some instructors would be fine with you being finished at this point. I don't know if I would be completely okay with that because there is a little extra move you could do here. This negative could be glued into this negative right there. Remember, this is a negative one. And negative one uh, just adds another power to that negative one right there. And so you could compress this down a little bit and you might think, well, now I'm done. But I would like to get you in the habit of collecting like powers of X. This is gonna be incredibly important once you move into differential equations and actually really into engineering as well. So you might as well just get used to it here. Both of these summations are indexed to start the same number, n equals zero, and they go to infinity. So you can glue them together as long as you know they both converge, which they do on the interval from negative two to two. So I'll glue them together. I'm actually gonna rewrite them in a different order, mainly because I want to. I just dislike writing a minus sign first, so I'm gonna rewrite it. And we get down to there. And one final move is to factor out x to the nths. These x to the nths right here are common to both terms within that series. And factoring that, is going, factoring that out is going to be just so very important in future math courses, specifically differential equations and engineering courses. So let's go ahead and factor that x to the nth out. And when I say factor out, I really don't mean factor it out of this series itself, I'm just factoring it out of those two terms. And there we go. That's a nice way to write it. There are actually other ways to write this, but I think that this is an excellent final move here. So this, I'll put a little asterisk here, just telling you that this is a good stopping point, combining like terms of powers of X, basically. Some people will re-index re this. You don't have to. But if you're willing to, you could totally re-index this. You might want to say, well, I would rather these, since these are all n plus ones, I would rather these to be k, for example. And so you could, you don't have to do this. You can stop the video now, but I'm just telling you, you could let k equal n plus one. And then if n is zero, that would imply k is equal to one. And the reason why I'm writing this is because I'm re-indexing this as well. And finally, just looking at this, n is equal to, well, subtracting one from both sides, k minus one. And if you do that re-indexing, again, not required. I'm just telling you that if you're working out of a textbook and you see a different answer than yours, this might be why, because they might have re-indexed this and said, oh, that's a summation k equals, let's see, we're going to start at k equals 1, go to infinity, of negative 1 to the kth over 2 to the kth power minus 1 over 4 to the kth power times x to the n, which is k minus 1. So that's another way to write that. They're the same statements. You can expand it out a little bit and you can easily see those are actually the same statements. So in the end, we get down to a power series representation of f of x is equal to six over x squared minus two x minus eight. The main trick there is really to make sure that you do the partial fraction decomposition. And the sub main idea is when you have a combination of power series and you're gluing them together, first, they both have to be convergent. And second, when you glue them together, try to factor out common powers of x. That will be very, very helpful in the future. All right, that does it for this video. I hope it's somewhat helpful or very helpful to you. Uh, at the very least, I hope it was not unhelpful. 
whatever that means. All right, see you in the next video. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way cause. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Don't talk too much. That isn't cold. Sure, you may really hurt inside. It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.